the, the, the main thing that I want to talk about today to, to, to get into is uh, we have a tendency to lump the Arab Spring as though it is a singular event that took place in a singular place and uh, not recognize that each area, each region had its own very particular challenges and continues to. So why don't we start with uh, Yemen. Uh, you can talk to us a little bit. Y Yemen, I think, surprised a lot of people in terms of stepping into the Arab Spring because of its more tribal nature, because it is a more rural area. Uh, what, what were some of the challenges that that presented? Um, thank you, John. It's an honor to be here. Um, can I give a small analogy before Please. I go into Yemen? I think what's happened in the Arab Spring is that uh, it was seeded in Tunisia, germinated in Cairo or Egypt, greened in Yemen, um, welted in Libya, and dyed in Syria. I think if we can go through a cycle like that, it sort of gives us more of an understanding how it went about. And uh, for Yemen especially, it was surprising even for us in Yemen. We, we didn't expect this. We didn't expect the Yemeni women who were covered behind closed doors to be out there in the streets, have you seen from the images? It was a major surprise. And the thing is that uh, political uh, parties, even in the opposition, created a monster that they cannot control anymore. So even now that they want the Yemeni women to go back to their houses, that's not possible anymore. So I think if there's one thing we managed to get from the Arab Spring, is that we empowered public opinion. We empowered civil society, groups that did not think that they can make a difference, such as youth or women, realize that they can. And this is something nobody can take away from us.